Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem flattened binary tree into a linked list. We are given the root of a binary tree and we want to flatten it so that it turns into a linked list, not necessarily a true linked list because, you know, this uh, data structure obviously is made up of tree nodes, binary tree nodes, where each node has two pointers, a left pointer and a right pointer, but they want us to condense it into a linked list where we're not really making use of the left pointer, right? For each uh, left pointer of each node, it's just pointing at null. The right pointer is what we're actually going to be using which is going to assemble all of these nodes into a linked list. So this isn't too uh, difficult to do, but there is a catch. The ordering of the linked list should be the same as the pre-order traversal of the binary tree. Now, this isn't as bad as it sounds. This is actually going to make things really easy for us, and let me tell you why. We know that a binary tree like this one is, you know, a recursive definition, right? A node, a node, a root node like this one could have children and then its children are basically also trees themselves, right? This is a subtree, the left subtree, and this is the right subtree. When they say it needs to be the same as the pre-order traversal, the linked list needs to be the same as the pre-order traversal, what they mean is if we want to flatten this entire tree, the root node is going to go first, right? Because pre-order traversal uh, processes the root node first. So good thing is we don't have to make any changes to the root node. Then, uh, you know, what is going to come next uh, in our linked list to the right, we want to do the pre-order traversal, right? So we want to process the entire entire left subtree, meaning we want to flatten the entire left subtree uh, first, right? We want to flatten this entire right subtree and then stick it right in the middle over here, right? In between the root node and in between the right child. So once we flatten this thing, it's going to go in between. And then a uh, pre-order traversal then will process the entire right subtree. So then basically we want to flatten the entire right subtree. In this case, the entire right, right subtree is already flattened, right? It's made up of two nodes uh, and it's already flattened because there's no left child for any of the nodes here. So it's already flattened. So really, in this case, our job is to flatten the left subtree, stick it in here, and then we're done. But, okay, how do we flatten the left subtree? It's a recursive definition, right? So we're going to apply the exact same recursive algorithm here uh, as we would on the root node. So, okay, in order to flatten this tree first, we have to process the first node. Okay, this, it's a root node, so it's not going to change, right, pre-order traversal. This node goes first. It's going to stay exactly where it is. Then we're going to flatten the left subtree. Uh, it's already flattened. It's just a single node, right? So this node is going to go, now that it's flattened, it's going to go it's going to be stuck in between here. The three is going to go here. And then the right subtree here is also going to be flattened. It's already flattened. So no changes are going to be made here. So really, we're going to get rid of this node and instead have a three uh, over here, right? So this is what the flattened is going to look like. Then once we're done with that, this is going to get stuck in between here, as you can see in the output. Uh, that's, you know, that's what happened. So all of that, hopefully that logic, that general recursive logic of this algorithm makes sense. It basically follows a pre-order traversal. Now, the only challenge that we're going to have is when we do uh, flatten the left subtree right over here, you can see we flattened it and then we stick it in here. How are we going to stick that flattened subtree or that linked list here? Well, of course, the root node which over here you can see initially it's pointing, you know, at its right child. But we want to disconnect that pointer. We want it not to point at its right child anymore. Instead, we want it to point to its uh, left child over here, right? Because we want to stick this in between. So we're going to reassign the right pointer, uh, you know, to be, it's a little bit messy as I'm drawing it now, right? But uh, you know, cross this pointer out and then stick that right pointer to actually point here. And then we want to change the left pointer and have it actually point to null, right? Because the left pointer should always be null. So that's what we're going to do to the root node. 
And so the last thing we want to do is the end of the linked list, right? The end of the left uh, subtree, it should be pointing at this node over here, right? It should be pointing at the right child of the root node. So the only thing we're going to have to remember is to actually get as we're doing this algorithm recursively, we're going to make sure once we once we have flattened the entire left subtree, we have to return a pointer to the last node or rather the tail of the linked list. If we have the tail of the linked list, then we can connect that pointer over to the right child of the root node, which is what we want to do because in the output you can see, right, this, uh, you know, this linked list, the left child linked list has to be connected to this, which is the right child linked list, right? This is the right subtree, the right flattened linked list. So in order to do that, we have to make sure that we return the tail of the linked list so that we can actually connect these pointers. So that's the main idea of the algorithm. We are going to do it recursively because that's kind of the easiest way to logic through it. But you can do it iteratively as well using a stack to traverse uh, the entire tree. But since we are traversing the entire tree, uh, the overall time complexity is going to be big O of n, where n is the number of nodes. The memory complexity, since we're doing it recursively, we're going to have a call stack uh, for the memory. It's going to be the memory is going to be big O of h, where h is the height of the tree. Uh, you know, worst case, H ends up being N. But yeah, so that's the time complexity. Now we can get into the code. Okay, now let's get into the code. So they do say that this function actually doesn't need to return anything. All we need to do is actually just modify the input tree that we're given. So we'll be given a, a tree node. It could be null, it could not be null. We don't have to return anything. Uh, but I'm gonna actually, inside of this function, define another recursive function called DFS. We'll be doing the same thing with this function. We'll be passing in the node. So this DFS is what's going to flatten uh, the tree, flatten the root tree, and return the list tail, right? Because we do want it to return something. That's the main reason I'm defining another function rather than just using this root flatten function, because this fun function is not supposed to return anything. But here we do want to return something because we do need to return the tail values. As always with tree traversals, if the input is null, so meaning if we're given an empty tree or a null node, then we can just return none. Uh, reason we're returning none is because can't flatten an empty tree, so the tail of the empty tree is just going to be null. Uh, now is actually getting into the recursive case. And, you know, before we even finish the function, I always just write the recursive case and just assume that it's going to work. So when we run DFS, uh, of course, we want to run DFS or rather our flatten algorithm on the left subtree first, and then we want to run it on our right subtree. So assume that this DFS call is going to flatten the subtrees. What is it going to return? It's going to return the tail, right? So uh, if we flatten the left subtree, then we're going to return the left tail. So let's assign that. And if we flatten the right subtree, we're going to return the right tail. Now, last thing we need to do is actually connect our uh, half, you know, our linked lists, right? So we're at the, we're at a certain node, we're at the root node, right? We have a left uh, linked list that's been flattened and a right linked list that's been flattened. And remember, we want to connect them. Now, only edge case you have to remember is what if one of these lists is empty? What's going to happen if both of them is empty? Empty, then we don't need to do anything, right? If the right list is empty, we still need to take the left list and then, you know, move it over to the right side. If the left side is empty, but the right side is not empty, we have flattened the right side, but we don't have to do anything because it's already on the right side of the root, right? And the left is already null, so we don't have to do anything. So the only case where we are going to do a uh, insert operation is if the left tail is non-null, right? That's the only case where we actually have to do the insert. Now, this pointer manipulation can get a little bit abstract, so feel free to draw out a picture if you want, but we're basically going to be following what I did in the drawing. So remember, we have a left tail, and we want the next pointer of that left tail to be assigned to the current right child of the root, right? So root dot right. So this is basically uh, inserting, you know, attaching the left uh, linked list, attaching it to the right linked list. 
And we also have to make sure that the root is also attached to the left linked list. So we have to say root.left or root.right is going to be set to uh, root.left, right? Because this is the tail of the linked list, right? But we want the root's right pointer to be at the beginning of the left linked list. And what's going to be the beginning of the left linked list? It's just going to be the left child itself. Uh, feel free to refer back to the drawing or you know draw it out yourself if you need to for this. Uh, and the, remember, the last thing we need to do is the root. We want to make sure that its left pointer is set to null, uh, right? So we're going to do that last, obviously. We're going to say root.left is equal to null because, you know, we have to do it last because we, we are using the root.left's original value in this statement up above, right? And uh, the reason why this line goes second is because we're reassigning root.write and we are actually using root.write in the line up above. So this order that I wrote these three lines of code is not random. We had to do it this way because we had to use the original values of the pointers before we ended up changing them. But this is basically it. This is the entire insert operation and then setting the left to null, and we're only gonna be doing that if the left uh, link, the left tree is non-null, right? And it's, it, instead of even using left.tail, we could even just say root.left is non-empty, you know, if this makes more sense. Uh, either one is fine, I believe. Okay, and remember the last thing, remember this DFS is supposed to flatten and it's supposed to return the list of the tail, or, you know, the, the tail of the list. So what is that gonna be? Isn't it true that the right tail, you know, the right subtree's tail is gonna be the tail of the entire linked list or the entire tree? Like, isn't that true? That makes sense, right? The, the right tree's tail is gonna be the entire tail. But what if the right tail is null? What if the right subtree was empty? Then what's the tail gonna be? Okay, in that case, the tail is gonna be the left tail, right? But what if the left, the right subtree and the left subtree were empty? So you know these tails happen to be null. In that case, the tail is going to end up being whatever the root is, right? Because the root is the only node. It doesn't have any left or right subtrees. So this is the order. If one, of, if this is null, then we return this. If this is null, then we return this. You know, you could write some if statements uh, depending on what language you're using, but. At least in Python, a little easy and neat way to write this code out is to do with Boolean. So, uh, you know, just put an or in between each of these. And the reason this works is because the way Python evaluates it is if this ends up being non-null, then last will be assigned to the right tail. If it is null, uh, then it'll look at the next value and say, okay, is this null? If it's non-null, then this is what's gonna be assigned to last. If both of these are null, then this one will definitely be non-null. Uh, and this one will be assigned to last. So, and then we can just return last. So it's, you know, kind of an intuitive way for me at least and a concise way to write this out. So that's how I'm gonna do it. You could do it with uh, conditionals if you want. Uh, and then all we really need to do is call the, the flatten function, the DFS function, passing in the root node. We don't have to return anything because remember our root function, flatten doesn't require us to return anything. So just calling this function is good enough. Okay, and actually just caught a quick typo. So in this line, for some reason, I wrote left tail dot next when we actually want the right pointer of left tail, right? Because we're actually using the right pointers. So sorry about that. I hope that you caught it and it wasn't too confusing, but otherwise let's run the code and it does work. As you can see on the left side, it is a linear time algorithm. It looks like the time complexity isn't super efficient for whatever reason, but I don't pay too much attention to that. So I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel if you'd like, and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.